Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you to each one of you that are here. And uh, I understand that our, uh, uh, our former colleague, uh, uh, Frank Wolf, was here earlier. Uh, we all salute him. I think the foundation that he built and the work that he did in the Congress, uh, we stand on his shoulders. And uh, uh, so I wanted to acknowledge him. I want to acknowledge um, the uh, In Defense of Christians for your work in uh, organizing uh, this important event. And certainly to my um, uh, extraordinary co-chair of the Religious Minorities uh, uh, Caucus, uh, Congressman Jeff Fortenberry, uh, and, uh, uh, of course, our colleague Chris Smith, I understand, was here. He got here before the vote, so um, uh, uh, obviously to the panel of experts, to all of the, uh, the advocates. Um, this is an issue that uh, I think befits who and what we are by speaking out and calling what is going on in the Middle East exactly what it is, a genocide, a genocide. And so the work of the caucus is very important on this, and certainly the work of the experts that have been so instructive to us. Earlier this month, uh, USA Today columnist Kirsten Powers cited an account in the Middle East that I think is almost beyond, uh, beyond uh, comprehension. Uh, she wrote the following, and I'm quoting. In October of this year, Islamic State militants in Syria demanded that two Christian women and six men convert to Islam. When they refused, the women were publicly raped and then beheaded along with the men. On the same day, militants cut off the fingertips of a 12-year-old boy in an attempt to force his Christian father to convert. When his father refused, they were brutalized and crucified. This is systematic extermination of religious minorities across the Middle East, including those who share the same heritage I do. I am of Armenian and Assyrian descent. This is history for my family that is repeating itself all over again. And the unfortunate deep, deep sadness of this is, is that the lens is very broad. It not only includes those from whom I uh, claim my nationality, uh, but so many others as well. These are barbaric acts by ISIS. Uh, they certainly include torture. They certainly include murder. And it includes the displacement of millions of Christians and other ethnic and uh, religious minorities. And it must be stopped. Our caucus, which I'm very, very proud of, um, starting out with just uh, um, a band of, uh, of uh, really dedicated individuals, uh, but a small group, um, but with a good, strong voice, has grown. And this effort is bipartisan. And we have brought forward uh, uh, a genocide resolution. We have worked uh, with In Defense of Christians and others uh, to make sure that the uh, resolution is all-inclusive, that it has the accuracy that it deserves, because each group, a stakeholder, uh, is precious to us, and their voices matter. Uh, but an official statement of the United States of America must also be made to label these atrocities carried out against all of these uh, groups and individuals uh, for what they are, and that is genocide. That is genocide. This is a major step to take, but it must be identified as that. I want to um, uh, uh, make you aware of something that I think is really very important, and that is the Knights of Columbus, and I salute them, because they ran full-page ads in newspapers 
uh, in support of our resolution. And uh, uh, they uh, uh, worked with the, the Marist Poll Organization uh, that then did a poll of the American people. And the result of that poll that just came out is that 55% of Americans believe the targeting of Christians and other religious minorities in the Middle East by ISIS meets the UN definition of genocide. So you see the decency, uh, the respect is deeply embedded in the American people. So all it takes is the political will. And I'm very proud that we have garnered, I believe, uh, 167 bipartisan uh, co-sponsors of the resolution. I want to thank all of you for your role uh, in this, uh, because it takes building step by step. And uh, uh, we are, uh, when I say we, uh, uh, both uh, Congressman Fortenberry, myself, everyone that is part of the effort. Uh, we want you to know that, uh, uh, that we are uh, enormously grateful uh, to the advocates uh, for the work that you have done to help bring us to this point. But we are not done yet. Uh, we're, we will not be satisfied until we uh, grow our numbers uh, on a bipartisan basis on the resolution. Uh, but I think that uh, this is a time, this is a time where future generations, I believe, will measure ours. Did they speak out? Did they recognize this and say so? I think here at home, uh, we take for granted um, so many things. But go abroad, anywhere and what you are made acutely aware of is that everything we say and do here matters. People listen from across the globe. People read, people talk, people analyze what the United States of America and its people are saying. So uh, I wish we didn't have to work on something like this. Uh, but it calls for action of the Congress and the speaking out of the Congress of the United States on behalf of the American people. This poll, this Marist poll uh, shows, demonstrates that 55% of the American people uh, agree that we should, uh, uh, that this indeed uh, fits the UN definition of genocide. Uh, so more than anything else, I'm here to thank all of you for the work that you're doing. Uh, and I think the, uh, uh, the blessings of your work uh, will be shared uh, by those um, that can't help but think that they are forgotten right now. And that uh, in our day, in our time, that we can do something that's extraordinarily noble. Thank you to all of you.